Hello, um, I am Bert. Um, this is Pastori time with just a lone Pastori today. Um, Sean did a book haul, I think, fairly recently, and um, I am doing one today. Um, so I've gathered up quite a few books this month. Um, some secondhand, some from Sean, one for free, and let's go through them. Okay, so. Um, one thing that happened um, this month, was it last week, last Sunday, was that I was asked to go and read um, in a shed in the back of a pub with um, a bunch of other people, uh, sort of local poets and things like that, um, from this book, which is a Pomegranate Garden, which is a selection of poems by Hedar Ugulun, um, who is a Turkish poet, and he is a renowned Turkish poet, apparently. I, I had not heard of him. This is his first um, book of translated poetry in English. Um, and it's just out. Um, I hadn't read any of his stuff before, but I thought it would be a nice thing to do. Um, and I actually ended up really enjoying them. So he was there. He's travelled over to Cardiff, and I think he's doing a bit of a tour of the UK. Um, so it was kind of like a welcome, welcome him to Cardiff kind of reading. Um, and he read in Turkish from, you know, his original books. And he's had like over 12 collections out. And it was lovely to hear him reading. And he was a lovely guy. Um, so, yeah, this was um, just a nice thing. And a really good book of um, kind of quite romantic poetry. Lots of love poetry in there. Um, yeah. If you're interested in some poetry in translation, that's a good one. Sean went to Bristol to treat herself to books recently and I requested a couple of books from bookshops in Bristol and she very kindly um, treated me so I gave her a general gist of what I was after one of which I was only expecting one book here I was just spoiled one book was I just wanted a Christmas cozy crime um, and I know that there's lots of the British crime library books out at the moment and they all look lovely I've read a few of them and uh, I haven't really loved them, but, you know, I like them. They're fine. Um, but I wanted like a Christmassy one of those or that, or that type of thing, really. Um, anyway, she found me Death Comes at Christmas by Gladys Mitchell, um, which sounds fantastic. And I love Gladys Mitchell. I've read, I read just one thing of hers before, but I really liked it. And I've, I've since bought more. So I'm quite excited to get to this. It's um, She's a competitor. She's supposed to be the equal of Dorothy L. Sayers and Agatha Christie. So you're in that ballpark. Now, the problem with this is that it was pre previously published under a different name, which was Dead Men's Morris, which doesn't sound particularly Christmassy. And then reading the back, it does say that it starts on Christmas Eve and there's like a crime, which is then solved in the spring. So I'm not sure how Christmassy, other than the gorgeous cover with the sparkly bits, this is going to be, but maybe I'll start reading it at Christmas and we'll, it will continue into the spring. Probably not. But yeah, that was lovely. Thank you, Shani. And she also bought me um, this book, which is uh, Afternoons with the Blinds Drawn by Brett Anderson of Suede. This is his second memoir. I read his other one. What was that called? Who's that? That was called, um, oh my button's come open. That was called Coal Black Mornings, which is this one here. And this came out a couple of years ago. And this one is, um, kind of went up to, uh, the formation of Suede or them getting signed, I think. So it was mostly about his childhood, um, growing up in quite a sort of poor council estate, um, what he was reading, his kind of, um, I think he went up, went up for uni, um, a bit of stuff about Justine Frischman in there. And this one sort of takes off from there, so it's the, the suede years. So when I'm in a particular 90s mood, which sort of comes and goes, but when I'm in, back in that mood again, um, I'll definitely be picking this one up um, and hearing some of the behind the scenes tales of suede, who back in, you know, I remember seeing, was it the Drowners, the video for the Drowners back in 1993, 
and just my little mind was blown. Um, they were just so needed at that time in Britain. It's so transgressive and they gave kind of a voice to lots of these communities that weren't really, especially later on in the 90s when it became very loud culture-y. Suede were one of the few bands that kind of, uh, you know, sort of gave, gave a voice to like the queer community and sort of the outsiders. Oh no. Carry on. <laughs> Doorbell. Probably Sean's ordered some more candles or some essential oils. Okay. I went secondhand book shopping. And this time of year, especially, I tend to want to read fantasy and genre fiction, a bit of crime. Not so much fantasy, actually, more like sci fi. Um, this, yeah. It just hits me at this time of year. So I deliberately went to Troutmark in Cardiff to go upstairs and have a look at their science fiction. And I found some good stuff. I, um, I found Night Wings by Robert Silverberg. I love Robert Silverberg. He's one of my favorite science fiction authors. Um, I've read a few of his sort of 70s ones, like Dying Inside, um, Down to Earth, I think it was, or Down Into Earth, or some, one of those. Um, the Book of Skulls was one. They're all brilliant. S maybe slightly dated. Um, this is a, I think, late 60s, early 70s one, Nightwings. What a cover. Now, I haven't read Flowers for Algernon. It's, it was always, well, when back in the day, it was one of Sean's favourite books. Um, and lots of people love it. I've still to read it. But I did find another book by the same author, um, Daniel Keyes. And this one's called The Contaminated Man. Um, and it's about someone that, this guy that, is part of a minor industrial accident and the um, area is contaminated and he, this guy Barney he spreads the dust around where he lives his city afterwards and this dust um, has a strange effect on the people around him a not so good effect let's say so I think this is kind of maybe sci-fi maybe a little bit horror early 70s I think it's 71 something like that um, Terrifying in its potential reality, said the Manchester Evening News. All uh, right, A Dream of Falling, great cover. Um, this is by Mary O'Rank, which I, I'm guessing might not be her, her actual name. It's a chilling portrait of a woman's mental and moral disintegration, which I'm there for. Uh, I've, now, it's kind of ma marketed as quite a trashy, erotic book i have a feeling and this was my sense when i picked it up um that it's been mismarketed and actually it might be quite good um i know a lot of you know kind of quite um underground -y sort of books were kind of slipped through the net as erotic fiction back in the day so stuff like william burroughs and stuff like that i'm not saying this is going to be william burroughs but it's going to be mario rank and um i'm hoping it's some kind of I'm hoping it, le it at least is possibly written by a woman. Um, insight into some psych psychological um, breakdown of this lady with the many mirrors. I found a Margaret Drabble. So uh, I'm interested to read more Margaret Drabble. I, I've read... Was it called the... Jerusalem the Golden, I think it was called. And I enjoyed that one, and I could tell from reading it that she was an author that I needed to explore more from. I know that um, she wrote a book called The Millstone. That was, I think, her first book in kind of the mid-60s, which was, I think, you know, like a big sort of talking point at the time. I think it dealt with... Was it? I, I'm not sure what, what exactly it was about, but um, it might have been like single motherhood or abortion or some kind of big mid-60s topic. Um, this, I think, is the book after that, and it's called The Waterfall, another great cover. Um, this is about Jane Grey, poetess and failed wife. I literally just read that bit and then bought it. Um, I don't really want to carry on with what it's about, because I kind of like the idea of a failed wife. Um, now, this looks amazing, and I think this might have to be my next read. Um, so this is Nightmare Blue. It's by two authors, Gardner... De Zoys and George Alec Effinger. It's a Fontana science fiction um, 
book from the early 70s again, I'm guessing. Well, mid-70s, 1975. It's about a terrifying weapon, which is this drug called Nightmare Blue. Um, so the evil and wolf-like Ainza Lords, which I think this guy is an Ainza Lord, they have enslaved the universe with this drug. Um, they're yeah, evil and wolf-like. Um, so yeah, one shot is addictive, withdrawal symptoms are death. It sounds very 70s. Um, it's so good. It's going to be really good. And finally, I did go book shopping and bought myself a couple of things. Um, one of which was um, Patrick Modri Modiano's Missing Person. I'm a massive fan of Patrick Modiano. I've read quite a few of his books. He's a French author. I think he's still going, possibly not, possibly. But um, a lot of his 70s and 80s stuff has been sort of translated fairly recently and at least released in the UK for the first time. And I've really, really enjoyed them. They're, they kind of remind me a little bit of Paul Oster. They're, they're quite obsessive in going over the same themes. Often that theme involves revisiting a moment in kind of autobiographically in the author's past and just going over and, and over it. And often there is this kind of um, the idea of like a, an absence of a, of a particular person, so often like a girl that he's trying to remember or he's trying to work out what happened to her. Um, so, I mean, obviously this is called Missing Person. So this one has that same theme, but it seems to be about a private detective in Paris who's trying to solve the mystery of his own past. So again, looking back over his own past, um, I'm guessing in this case, he's the missing person. So I think something, he's trying to unravel something that happened. I just love authors that go over the same themes kind of obsessively. They kind of fascinate me. Um, it's a beautiful new edition. It's part of the, the new Penguin Modern Classics with the kind of green spine. Um, yeah, they're all kind of novellas as well, to be honest. Like they have, this one in particular has very kind of short chapters. Um, Yes, that's going to be good. And finally, um, I got this, which is called Plenty Under the Counter by Kathleen Hewitt. I came across this new um, range uh, of books, which is the uh, Imperial War Museum Wartime Classics. So they, I, I noticed that they have reissued a few books from wartime, uh, one of which was, I think, um, From the City from the Plough by Alexander Barron, which is one of my favourite books definitely my favourite kind of wartime kind of uh, front on the front lines book is that a thing on the front line about soldiers um, this is kind of more of a London in the Blitz detective novel which sounds fantastic um, London 1942 this yeah it's basically a crime around that whole um, Blitz London which I love that setting um, this um, is, yeah, I think they're going to be releasing more in this range. Um, let's have a look at them compared to All Quiet in the Western Front. Yeah, I don't know much about this one, but I, from the, uh, the tone sounds quite light, so it's going to be like, not a heavy, kind of particularly serious book. I think it's going to be quite sort of nice, cosy read, um, despite, you know, all the stuff that's going on there on the home front. Um, inspired by Kathleen Hewitt's own experience of wartime London. So that's that. That's all of the books um, that I picked up this month. Uh, I'm having a really good reading month. Um, I have kind of slipped out of the whole nov nov nonfiction November. I think I've pretty much dodged those for, I can only do things for a couple of weeks and then I, my brain just goes off. So other than that, I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying what I'm reading. I've also discovered audiobooks, which I will discuss in a, a wrap-up when we do that. Um, I hope you are having a lovely Friday and are going to have a wonderful weekend. Um, see you soon. Bye-bye.